Guard now who says uncertainty is a job killer. Diana Furchgott Roth is a senior fellow at the Hudson Institute, also the former chief econ economist at the Labor Department. I've heard a lot of people, Diana, say that, that, there's a, that the companies don't want to hire. They're uncertain about the future. What's causing it? Well, if you knew that your taxes were going to go up by five percentage points on January 1st, 2011, as they are, at the bottom from 10 to 15 percent, at the top from 35 to 39.6 percent, if you knew you were going to have higher energy costs, because the president a couple of days ago was calling for passage of the cap-and-trade bill, mm -hmm. if you knew you were going to have a harder time borrowing because of the financial regulatory reform bill moving through the hill, if you knew you were going to have to pay $2,000 per worker per year if you don't have the right kind of health insurance you wouldn't be hiring either so it's, it's not the president's policies the or the hiring. policies of the current administration that are instead of encouraging discouraging uh, companies from hiring at least in your view what exactly. would have to change to get that turned around in the short term well congress and the president first of all congress could pass a budget it's its primary responsibility it isn't doing that now it's not tackling our deficit problems congress should pass a budget it should announce that the current tax rates are going to stay the way they are until the unemployment rate has gone down significantly. Uh, it should put on hold financial regulatory reform and cap and trade. Mm -hmm. And basically it should make this an environment where employers don't have a penalty for hiring. Right now every new worker brings a penalty. If you're at 48 workers right now, you don't have to pay the $2,000 health insurance penalty in right. 2014. So you're not going to want to get over the 50 amount. If you have 55 workers, you're going to want to lay off so you get under the 50 amount, the 50 level. So it's not encouraging as the administration talks about getting ready for health reform in 2014. Right. Incentives then need to be changed. At least that's how exactly. you see it. I want to bring up another chart of the average duration of employment or unemployment. It's been at a record high now. When the president came into office, um, people on average were unemployed for about 20 weeks. That's up at 35 weeks, or it was in June. And as Peter says, 652,000 people last month, or 625 actually, to get it right, stopped looking for work. So and even that's, right. even, yes. that's really the big problem is here is people are so discouraged. Well, exactly. We have 45% of the unemployed who are out of work six months or longer. When you're out that long, it's not just that you get discouraged, but you lose your skills, you lose your networks, you develop bad habits like sleeping late in the morning and maybe drinking a little bit too much. And this does not help get people back to work. This is almost a record. Last month was a record at 46%, but this is almost a record since the Bureau of Labor Statistics study keeping data in 1914. Discouraging numbers. Um, if the Very current path, I know you made suggestions about what we could do differently, but what if we don't do anything differently? How will things look at the end of the year? If we don't do anything differently, we're not going to see significant job gains by the end of the year. We're definitely not. And we need those job gains not just so people go back to work, but so the Treasury gets an influx of tax payments on income. True. All this time people are out of work, the Treasury is collecting fewer income tax revenues. That means that our deficit is getting bigger. Diana, so there's all kinds of reasons we want people back to work. There are a number of reasons. There's no shortage of reasons. The problem is getting them there. Diana, thanks. Diana Perchcott Roth Thank you very much at the Hudson Institute. And also, she was the chief economist at the uh, Labor Department at one point as well. Okay, that brings us to the trade today. Sandra Smith is.